So we fired off this season with our Skype version to uh, make sure we're physically distancing from each other. We have a couple of episodes coming up that we're going to air over the next few weeks. You're going to see us standing pretty close together. You're going to see me sharing some barbecue time and enjoying some food with some great barbecue people. Don't panic. This was all previously recorded. In the meanwhile, enjoy my buddy Marco's backyard where we're going to enjoy some dill pickle pizza. Marco. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing, bud? Good. How are you? Good. Glad Good to, to see find you. Glad to finally make it over to your place. Absolutely welcome. Where, tell me about this. Is this where you water your cattle here in? <laughs> that Actually, we're uh, we're going to be doing some uh, raised uh, vegetable gardens there. Okay. Now you like so. to grow all your own vegetables, and you yep. do a lot of stuff yourself. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, make my own wine. Uh, we cure our own meats. Uh, cure your own tomato meats. sauce. Right. Pig so canning something and we stuff. can take a look at today. Absolutely. We'll go in the cantina whenever you want. Super. Good. And uh, what about cooking today? What are you going to cook up for us? Uh, we got a couple of uh, things we're going to do on the egg. Uh, we got some. That's uh, over on the other side here. Yeah, the just on the other area. side of the bar here. I love here. this great little bar area. Is this where people kind of hang out and yeah, watch you cooking? Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Put the pressure on. Yeah. So we yeah. got an appetizer on there and a dessert on there, and then we're gonna fire the pizza oven up and do three pizzas. pizzas. Yeah. Good. Now, when we talked about the types of pizzas, you threw out a dill pickle pizza. Were you kidding, or are we making a dill pickle? pizza? We're making a dill pickle pizza. But I can't wait. Don't to judge. That. There you go. Just wait to chase. All right. In the meanwhile, let me show me your pool. Absolutely. So this, it looks like it's all fairly new. I know you, you just recently did all these renovations and fixed up the backyard, right? Yeah, we yeah. put the pool in this year and uh, just finished up the landscaping a week ago. It looks fantastic. What a great use of a corner lot. I love how it all kind of came together. Yeah. And uh, you see a lot of corner lots sometimes will have somewhat wasted space on the side, yeah. but I love how you put the pool in here, made good use of that, but you still have lots of privacy. And of course, the cooking area here. Yeah, yeah, we love the cooking area. Yeah, That's yeah. where we spend a lot of our time. A lot so. of dining here. You got a few barbecues going on this way. Yep. But this is the star attraction for that's today. The, that's the right? star today. Pizza oven. So where does a guy get a hold of something like this? Uh, this was purchased from a company out of Toronto. Yeah. Um, there's various ranges in price, right? Mm -hmm. Your your uh, entry level models under a thousand dollars, right up to ten, fifteen thousand. Yeah. Right? And do you so. find you use it a lot? Is it is it kind of your go to barbecue or? No, but it's it's really a conversation piece, and, yeah. and people really like to, to have the pizza out of it. One of those barbecues um, that you don't use a lot, but when you use it, it's the star. It, and being on the corner, like you said, it, it gains some, it garners <laughs> some bet. attention. I bet for sure. So you're from the house. It's a summer day. Great, as I said, super use of a corner lot. I love how you put the pool area together. Great area to relax in here. This looks fantastic. And then you cook and you dine right here. Absolutely, it's 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 a small yard, but we've tried to maximize. Yeah. how much we can use it yeah. so super it looks good and the yeah. vegetables will be growing over there so listen uh you talked about the menu i'm interested in this dill pickle pizza what do we have to do first uh we're gonna go inside and uh, get some ingredients prepped all right let's do it so with the menu the way you described it all the different things there's probably a lot of prep ahead of time you got a few things started so walk us through what's happening uh we're gonna let me know when i can help absolutely can. we're gonna uh, caramelize some onions and mushrooms here okay um a little bit of butter a little bit of balsamic vinegar let me throw some in there absolutely yeah. toss it all in there and that so just mushrooms butter uh a little salt and oil, pepper yeah salt that's, and pepper Perfect. that's all we got in there and that's oh. actually going to go on top of our uh our wheel of brie on a plank oh okay and that's going to obviously go on one of the barbecues the smoker the that's going to go egg. on the big green egg back here we've got uh we've got some leeks that we're also going to caramelize down and we're going to use that uh, on one of our pizzas as a Sounds base for one of our pizzas. Good. And here we've just got a little bit of garlic and olive oil, going to lightly saute that. We're going to add some cream, uh, butter, make a bit of a roux. This is going to take a few minutes to caramelize while we're doing that. You mentioned uh, earlier that you dry a lot of your own meats. Yep. Let's take a look. I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Come on Good. down. All right. So this is the room. This is the, uh, this is the cool this room. Is, this is where it all gets happy. So what's going on here? Tell me a little bit. Uh, we've got uh, three uh, prosciutto. Okay. So those were started uh, Christmas time last year. Right. So I like to do it at least 12 months. And, and how do you start them? Uh, they're salted, uh, pressed. We do that a couple times, and then we rinse them off with some wine and let time do its thing. Wow, incredible. Yeah. And we're going to put some of that on some pizza tonight? We are. Awesome. We've got some already Good. sliced up. And uh, I see you've got some homemade wine in here. Uh, you've got a couple of things in some jars there. Tell me a little bit about what's happening here. Uh, we've got some tomato sauce back in the corner. So that's uh, stuff well, I make outside. Yep. Yep. Uh, we've got homemade red and white wine. 
uh, vinegar, and uh, a few jars of pickles left. Vinegar. So walk me through the making of vinegar process. So uh, take your like leftover vinegar, little heels of bottles that's left over. Uh, I started with a vinegar mother, which is kind of a gelatinous uh, piece of acidic uh, cedar bar acid. Okay. Um, and yeah, we just let it do its thing, stick it in the jar with some, some air, cheesecloth over it, mm -hmm. so air can still get at it. Yeah. And eventually it turns the alcohol into acetic acid. Wow. So it starts with the wine and eventually becomes, we're doing the opposite. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Vinegar. Is that a good way to say it? Making it into vinegar. Yep. So sure. will you do anything to these prosciutto when you take them down? Is there any additional prep or do you just start slicing them? Uh, here, we'll, I'm going to take the all the, you know, the, the, the kind of yucky, so nice the yucky stuff, looking yeah. stuff. Uh, take your skin off. There's going to be a layer of fat left on it. If you see a normal slice right. of uh, prosciutto, you'll see a little bit of a fat mm -hmm. count. And then, yeah, we'll just slice it up. Just slice. And then uh, will you keep it hanging down here because you're not going to eat that whole thing at once or what will you? I, I'll butcher a whole one. Kind of cut it into smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. uh, works better with my smaller slicer, and then I'll vacuum pack them. Oh, okay, yeah, great, perfect. Wow, man, I'm glad, glad we had a chance to see this. This is super. Yeah, absolutely. I want to check on the stove, and we'll keep cooking. So thanks for uh, showing us down in your cellar. Everything absolutely. looks great. Can't wait to try some of that. Um, somebody's doing some cooking for you up here, keeping an eye on things, but you're taking back the wheel and taking control. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make our uh, roux. So we got a little bit of flour. So we got a tablespoon and a half of flour. Okay. We're just going to let that go for a minute or two, just to cook out any of the lumps in the in the uh, flour. All right, and you just added that to your olive oil and garlic that's already been softened up and cooking. That's right. Yeah, we let that go for a little bit. Just let the garlic kind of cook out a bit. It's going to be a very garlicky kind of white sauce. Everything's softened up. You're adding a little bit of the cream now. Yep, the cream. I've already added a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Okay. Before. We'll throw this back on the heat and we'll gently bring that up to a simmer and then we'll, uh, we'll let it reduce. All right, everything's cooking away on the stove here. We're caramelizing the leeks, we're caramelizing the onions, we're getting the, uh, the bechamel up to bring it some heat into there. Yep. Well, that's all happening. Tell me about the first appetizer we're gonna start with today. Uh, we're gonna do a uh, baked brie topped with our caramelized onions and mushrooms on the green egg. Okay, so what do we have to do to prep this? So we're just gonna uh, obviously go purchase whatever wheel of brie you like, whatever size you want. I'm just going to open it up and we're going to cut off the, uh, the top of the rind. We're just going to shave lightly the top. Okay, okay so we shaved off the top. Uh, if you left a little bit, that's fine. You're going to leave yep. the side. So this is going to kind of melt yep. in, the, in the rest of the brine. The, the, the rind's going to help kind of hold yeah. it in place. You're still going to get a little bit of stuff mm -hmm. oozing. Uh, once the onions and mushrooms are done, we'll top that and we're ready okay. to go. And what do we put this? Do we put this directly on the grill? Nope, we're going to do it on a cedar plank. All right. Just like this. Big one, small one, doesn't matter. Okay, so we just have to finish caramelizing our onions and put that together. So while this is continuing to caramelize, why don't we head outside and start the pizza? Sounds good. That looks pretty amazing. Now, last time I was in Italy, we had margarita pizzas. That's exactly what it looked like. All right, I've got your caramelized onions. Uh, you've got some brie here. Tell me what we're gonna do and walk us through this next process. Re real simple, Jeff. We're just gonna uh, dump this on the top. And again, these were just the onions and the mushrooms that were in. Yeah, a little bit of balsamic butter, vinegar, salt and pepper. Balsamic vinegar. Nothing complicated. Caramelize them all. So we're just gonna dump that right over top. You can see they're still nice and hot. Perfect. Man, that looks that already looks amazing. Anytime you're working with caramelized onions, right? What can what can go wrong? Yeah, you can pretty much eat this on a two by four and it tastes good. So we're gonna go slip this on the barbecue now. Straight to the egg. And uh, what temperature are we gonna put that on it? I've got it at 325, but if you're anywhere between 275 and 350, you're gonna be good. Okay. Yeah, uh, set up for indirect. Uh, in the in the egg, uh, there's a plate setter in there just to deflect the actual heat, so it's okay. gonna kind of so go. So we just don't have food. fire right underneath this. We have we the don't. heat without the fire being right underneath it. Although if you're somebody that doesn't have that. The uh, the uh, plank itself will act we'll, kind of we'll as a heat deflector problem. as well. Okay, too, great. So. so we could do this on a regular barbecue as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Oven, just, regular barbecue, yeah. whatever. All right, great. Let's throw it on there. There you go. Don't we got to touch it? Go. We're just going to leave it in there for... Leave it in there for uh, 10 to 15. We'll kind of monitor it after about 10. All right. Well, while the brie's cooking over there, uh, we're going to do some pizzas. Can't wait for that. We already saw the pizza oven. Tell me, now there's got to be some tricks to the trade with this. Is there a special kind of wood we use or how do you prep the oven? Run me through all that. Yeah, so we use uh, we use just hardwoods, never uh, never a softwood. 
that's not going to impart a, a nice flavor on your food. Okay. Um, so I, I started basic, just a basic kindling type fire okay. with some newspaper. Right. Um, so this would be clean. I, each time when you're done with this, you scrape all the ash absolutely. out. Absolutely. It's all clean. So you're starting from scratch. Yep. Lighting a fire up in the middle, a little bit of hardwood. That's right. Okay. Um, and I know this this oven, every oven's going to be a, di a little bit different depending on size and mm -hmm. what material it's made out of. Uh, I know this oven is about a two to two and a half hour fire right. as far as getting uh, the heat to get up to where we want to do pizza. Okay, in, so. and what temperature is that? Uh, we're gonna ask, uh, look for a floor temperature, minimum 650 to 750. And how do you know when you're there? Uh, I know just that the oven's ready, just because the fire bricks on the inside are starting to clean off. Any black soot is kind of burning off. Oh, okay. Um, so I know it's time for us to move the fire over to one side. Okay. Uh, we're gonna clean the floor so that we have a, a relatively clean surface to put our pizza right, uh, okay. right on. All right. And then I have an infrared uh, thermometer that'll give me my okay. reading. And are we ready to do that now? Yeah, we're I'll, gonna, we're gonna get out of the way. The, we're gonna move the, uh, the fire over here. Nothing complicated. We're just moving it over to one side. Whatever side doesn't really matter. I just always prefer moving it to the left. And then this is just a wire brush that we're gonna clean the surface. You can see how it gives us a clean uh, area and to And cook we're gonna on. cook over to this side right on that surface. Absolutely, right beside the fire. Super. So we're gonna move the pizza around a lot yep. just because uh, we don't want that one side to burn. All right, so we're gonna dig into this, but uh, I see you've got some pita chips. Is that the best way to do it? Pita chips, baguettes, whatever kind of chips. Something along those lines. Yeah. All right, well, let's dig in. Do I just yeah. scoop? I get right Absolutely. in there? Absolutely, get in there. Nothing fancy, it's just gonna be a mess. I hope so. Oh my, look at that. Tasty? Let me give it a shot. Can't here. even talk, wow, is that ever good? Boy, you ever get the smokiness? Mm -hmm. A lot of smoky flavor in there. The smoky mm. takes away from the, it doesn't just taste like onions. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of smoke flavor in there. Yeah. This is super. Well, let's let's uh, let's dig in a little bit more before awesome. we start the pizzas. Awesome. Well, now that we ate way too much brie cheese, <laughs> the best way to follow up eating cheese is by having more cheese. More cheese, yeah. This is the star. So let, let's make some pizzas. I'm going to let you do it and walk Absolutely. through what you're doing because you're so, the expert. So we just got our dough, nice fresh dough. And we're just going to start working it, pushing some of the air out of it. Now, you, you've mentioned before that you have made your own dough from scratch, but yep. you buy it at the store. It's just as... Just a know, time just, saver, right, yeah. Jeff? Right? Yeah. Just, you know, just as easy, just oh, as fresh. Absolutely. Sometimes it's just easier to let somebody else do all the work. Absolutely. And, uh, we get to enjoy it. We're just going to kind of work that a little bit. When you're working there. in this type of oven with the heat, is thickness going to be like do you want it really thin or do you yep. want to, you want to maintain some yeah we want a we want a thin crust pizza okay the th if we wanted to run it thicker then we're going to have to look at um lower in the heat okay right we don't want the outside to cook before the inside right. of the dough would be done yeah uh we got homemade tomato sauce that you saw downstairs nothing better and with with any wood oven pizza thin crust is it's less is more okay right so you don't want it drowning you should still be able to see the dough underneath. Oh, really? Okay. The sauce. Yeah. Right. Is there a reason for that? Is it a tasting, or will that will? Well, we want to, we don't want the toppings to just slide off, right? Okay. What kind of cheese are we putting on? Uh, this is a, a fresh buffalo mozzarella. Nice. So this is a this is a very traditional type pizza. Flavor. We're just gonna rip it into uh, some smaller chunks, scatter it around, and fresh mozzarella is just super creamy. Th there's a distinct difference, I think. There is really big yeah. difference, right? Some fresh basil. I wouldn't want to be using dried herbs. If you're going to use dry, maybe use a lot less. Okay. It's going to be a lot more pungent. Mm -hmm. We're right, going to uh, put some olive oil on after. Okay. And then over to the oven. All right, let's do it. Now, you were talking, while you're putting this in, you were describing to me earlier the importance of having a flame. So you, you didn't just create fire in here and make heat. There's a whole science going on. Absolutely. Like the, you can notice the, like the dome shape of an oven. You want that flame to be licking over the top, down onto the top of your pizza. So where we have that, uh, the fire, you don't just want red coals. You want an actual flame. I want an actual so flame. So that's carrying across the top, getting the heat coming down. Yep, All absolutely. Right. Good, good. And then uh, you mentioned it's going to be quick and to the point here. Just a couple so, minutes. Yeah, and we're going to, once I start to see the side closest to the fire start to bubble up a bit, turn brown, around a little bit. we're going to keep rotating it. Okay, super. Yep. That looks pretty amazing. Now, last time I was in Italy, we had 
margarita pizzas. This is exactly what it looked like. This is incredible. We're just going to finish it off with a little drizzle of olive oil. Of course. Can't go wrong with that. I like how the cheese all melted. You're right. You didn't, it didn't look like a lot of sauce when you put it in. Nope. But it, you know, it covered it nicely. It looks great. You, you don't want it sw everything to swim yeah, in sauce. Yeah, I can see the, what you mean. The crust's yeah. going to puff up and that's all going to drain into the Yeah, bowl. I see what you mean. All right. Yeah. Well, let's Absolutely. slice that up. Let's, let's slice it up. All right, so nice and hot. I'm going to get one here. You dig in. Got a little bit of buffalo mozzarella on there. Well, the olive oil. You see how it just keeps its shape. Less looking, more eating. Absolutely. It's very good. Wow, that is good. Big difference on the cheese, though, eh? The buffalo yep. mozzarella versus the regular. Really creamy. creamy. And you nailed it with the less is more. I think if you had too much, it'd be sliding off. It'd be crazy. Yep. Just right. Let's dig in. They usually have a lot to say, but... I'm just sitting here looking at us to put pickles. Seems to just standing there kind of saying we're putting pickles on a pizza. Well, now that I'm stuffed on uh, cheese, more cheese, and more cheese, <laughs> let's uh, let's make the next pizza. Perfect. Jump right in. Well, you saw just the, the dough and prep is all the same as we did last time, but this time we're going to... Uh, now we're going to try a little something non-traditional. We saw you had some prosciutto downstairs, yep. aging your own prosciutto. Yep. So we These got are the slice. leaks that we were caramelizing earlier. That's right. And we're going to add some olive oil. Uh, olive oil, I just like to finish, uh, right? Finish just with, the right? drizzle at the end. And mozzarella. Yep. This one's shredded. Is it buffalo mozzarella again? Nope, or that's just, a just traditional? Your regular, just hard mozzarella very, okay. shredded. Yeah. So no, no tomato sauce on this one? No. No, no okay. tomatoes. Going this right so this is not a, not a traditional type Italian pizza, but... Nonetheless, it's very, these are the caramelized tasty. leeks that you did earlier. Yep, and this is just like like leeks oil, slow cook them, a little salt and pepper, nothing uh, nothing complicated. So this is acting as our sauce. So this is kind of a base. Yep, and then we're gonna layer our, our thin slices of prosciutto. Wow, look at that. We're gonna put some cheese first, and again we're going with the less is more, and Absolutely. we saw the reason for that. Yep, and just kind of lightly drape this over top. It already looks great. And you're really loading it up with the prosciutto. When wow, it comes right. to the prosciutto, less is more. More is, is more not is better than yeah, more. Prosciutto. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that rule only works until we get the prosciutto out. And we're going to just do just a tiny bit more cheese. All right. All right. And we'll slide that in the oven. Yeah. Same thing. We've got that flame looking across the top. You can really feel the heat belting out of there. All right. This looks like it's finished up. Boy, they cook fast Beautiful. in there. You want to hand me a, a tray there, uh, Jeff? All the air bubbles from the air in the in the dough. Exactly. That prosciutto looks great. All right. Again, we're gonna just drizzle a little uh, fresh olive oil over there. All right, let's dig in. Ooh. Man, I know. I think I'll be skipping dinner tonight. <laughs> oh darn! I got this great big piece of uh, prosciutto on mine. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. Another winner. That's great. The saltiness yes. of the uh, of the prosciutto. So the leeks really work. Mm -hmm. I was interested to see how that would taste. That adds a whole new dimension to it. Mm -hmm. Still, it's a lot of moisture in there. I wasn't sure with no sauce, but mm -hmm. this is the winner for sure. Well, this is like great. It. And uh, the more is more on the prosciutto worked out just fine. Well, as we uh, approach pizza coma <laughs> status. <laughs> Dill pickle pizza. That's all I can say. Dill pickle pizza, and I'm going to let you run with it and we're, tell us what's this. We're going from traditional to quasi traditional, kind of fun, to just crazy. So, this is the uh, kind of the garlicky Alfredo type bechamel sauce that we made. And this was, this has, Very this has a lot of garlic in it. There, I can smell it I right now. I know yeah. your viewers can't, but. Yeah, trust me, it's got a lot of garlic. <laughs> we're going to add cheese, and okay. we're going to add uh, sliced homemade, home canned dill pickles good dose of cheese because we haven't quite had enough cheese no today. no we need more cheese yeah then we're going to throw some pickles on there yep and then just basic slice and again you, you, you can these or pickle these yourself yep but i mean any store-bought sliced up pickle would be fine i usually have a lot to say but i'm just sitting here looking at <laughs> us to put pickles. everybody seems to be just standing there kind of saying we're putting pickles on a pizza well let's not knock it till we try it all right well there we have it dill pickle pizza and I have to say, you let it slip, the truth comes out, you've never made this one before. 
I, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so this is the first uh, first absolutely. dill pickle pizza gotta, for both of us. Have fun with pizza. Hey, right? absolutely. Let's absolutely. do it. I'm, let, let's try. Let's slice it up. Yeah. All right. Let's dig in. All right. Dill pickle pizza with a lot of garlic. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. There's a lot of garlic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is really good. Yep. I think the uh, the vinegar of the pickle really cuts through the creaminess. It, yep. Yep. With the salt, the richness yeah, of the cheese. It's an interesting combination going on for sure. But the flavors are there. You taste the pickles, you taste the garlic. The yep. cheese is great, everything. And the crust, the oven does something to the crust. It's just airier, yeah. lighter, you know, not that we want to eat much more, but it, it really, really seals it in and then the, yeah. the inside is still really yep. nice and soft in there. Exactly, yep. this is perfect. Well, I think we'll be doing this one again. I think so. So we see the marshmallows are nice golden color, everything's soft, chocolate running all over. Let's Beautiful. dig in, it's yeah. not cheese, I'm into yeah, it, let's go. <laughs> Well, because we haven't had quite enough food, <laughs> we're going to make your version of sort of s'mores, I guess, yeah, or a, brownies. Similar, and, similar to that. And please tell me this is not cheese. That is marshmallows. Marshmallows. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> now that we know that that's not more cheese, tell me what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to take our brownies, and these were just uh, ones I made from uh, like an instant. Okay. Mix from the grocery store, or you can buy them, whatever's convenient, right? I think we got room for three. And you you warmed up. I noticed you warmed up or charred the cedar I charred, plank a little I bit. I charred the plank a little bit. You don't want it wet from soaking. Right. And then just to get infuse a little bit of that kind of backyard fireplace, okay, wood good. fire kind yeah. of taste to it. So yeah. uh, we're going to put a little bit of fresh mint that we've uh, we've chopped up. Not too much. A little bit of mint goes a long way. A long way. Right. And then we just have some uh, store-bought chocolate bar, whatever your favorite is. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. And then again... On the barbecue, another, gonna, another barbecue dessert. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, could be a gas barbecue. Uh, we're going to do it on the egg because we still got the egg hot from uh, earlier. Um, but any gas barbecue would be fine. All right. And then we're going to lay. So these were a jumbo uh, marshmallow that I just kind of cut in half, yeah. sliced mm -hmm. up a little bit, mm -hmm. make them a little bit more easy to work with. All right, perfect. Well, let's throw them on the uh, on the smoker and see what we end up with. Away we go. So we see the marshmallows are nice golden color. Everything's soft, chocolate running all over. Beautiful. Let's dig in, it's yeah. not cheese, I'm into yeah, it, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got a little crunchy on top, yeah. that's kind of a nice. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, the chocolate, eh? chocolate running all over. Hot. And wow, are they good. Wow. What's not to like? Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. The pizzas were amazing. This is really good. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's super. So listen, I'm going to dig in more and, and well, fin probably finish this brownie off before I get too far because <laughs> I haven't had enough food yet today. <laughs> but thanks for inviting us to your backyard. Thanks for cooking some food for us. It's been fantastic. The pizza oven is great. I learned a ton. Look forward to cooking some pizzas in my own backyard in the future. So Absolutely. Thank thanks you. again for having us. Appreciate it.